are going to cover a topic I don't think I have touched on at all yet, um, which is cell phone usage on the Appalachian Trail. There are typically two types of phones that you will see on the AT, and that is the smartphone or the flip phone. So of course the benefits of using a smartphone are you have a video recorder slash camera and an iPod. Um, and a phone all in one device. But then of course you have to worry about like a good case for it and making sure it doesn't break and then most likely you have a phone bill associated with the smartphone. So I'm um, just giving you all some things to consider. Uh, with a flip phone, you know, especially like a prepaid one, um, you don't have to really worry about it getting smashed as much. You know, you haven't invested as much into it and uh, it might also save you from having, um, you know, a cell phone bill while you're on the trail. So one way to save money. With that said, I used an iPhone 6 uh, with a life-proof case and did not have any issues the whole time. In fact, that's the way that I did all of my videos for this vlog. Um, I know some of you have asked that, so what I did was just videoed with the phone and then when I got to town and got hooked up to Wi-Fi, I would just um, drop it into Dropbox. Um, that's You can go to dropbox.com and you can also get the app on your phone. Um, and I might do a little bit more in detail about that if y'all would like to learn more about that later. So regardless of which type of phone you choose to go with, how do you keep it charged? Well, first of all, minimal use. Um, but I mean, if you're taking a lot of pictures and you have a smartphone, I, I just, I took pictures all day, every day. Airplane mode, I would say is the biggest saver of your battery um, while it's on and in use on the trail. Uh, so you keep it in airplane mode, you know, just while you're hiking and everything. And then I would only try to call out if I was up on top of a peak or something like that. Um, and that way your phone isn't constantly searching for service, you know, and, and you're, it's only doing that when you intend to do it. Also, at night when you sleep, you need to keep your phone close to you because like sleeping with it in your bag or, you know, in your shirt or whatever. Uh, cold is the fastest killer of a cell phone battery on the trail that I have ever seen, probably any electronics. So keep it warm while you sleep at night. And I also kept mine off. If I wanted an alarm, then I just set it on my watch, but you kind of get, in a certain uh, routine while you're out there anyway just like biologically it happens in addition to like preventing the battery from running out um, there are some things that you can do to charge it while you're on the trail like use external uh, battery sources so I started off with this little bitty I don't even know the brand of it <laughs> yes that zebra print um, I started off with this and of course it's got a little charger cord that uh, hooks to it that you can you know plug into a brick and then into the wall um, this gave me like 70% of a charge on my phone. Um, so I sent it home eventually. It only weighs uh, close to like two and a half ounces or something like that. But um, I upgraded to this one, which is about twice the weight. Uh, it's a SoundLogic XT. And this gave me at least two charges, usually even two and a half. So if you look at the packaging on these um, backup battery chargers, you'll see milliamp hours on there. Uh, this one, like I said, gave me two, at least two chargers, and it has 5,200 milliamp hours. Um, I think the most common backup charger used on the AT uh, after a survey of my hiker buddies uh, was the Anchor brand charger, and it seems like most of them use like 6,400 milliamp hours. Um, so you can probably find those on Amazon. And depending on the quality, you know, this guy probably paid like 15, maybe 10 bucks for or something like that. I don't remember, honestly. Um, but for you know a better one probably looking at like 15 to 30 dollars which really isn't bad my cell phone without the backup battery charger probably lasted about three days or so but again i was using it a lot i know people that didn't have a backup battery charger and they could get by with like five days or so but with this backup battery charger i was able to get uh, at least five days without having to worry about my battery dying and not having my cell phone to use so how do you charge this backup battery charger well <laughs> when you get to town um you, and you're resupplying i mean i was like a ninja like we got to where you know all of us could find outlets very easily and i had a charger for my cell phone and a separate charger for this that way i could find an outlet and just you know double plug them in and um even hide them behind a vending machine or a cook machine or something like that um while you're shopping if you're not planning on staying the night but these do take a little while to charge um a few hours at least one of the most common questions i get in reference to cell phones is how often do you have service on the trail it depends um, where you are. Uh, I would say that once I got to Maine, service kind of dwindled a little more. Um, I used Verizon, and I think that folks that got the best service used uh, Verizon as their provider, then maybe like AT&T, and then maybe Sprint. But um, 
I know that folks with AT&T were left without service, uh, at least in the South, quite a bit. Yeah, I would say Verizon is going to be your best provider. And I got service when I tried, I would say 70 or so percent of the time. I just would recommend not really trying to use your phone unless you're like on a mountain peak or something like that, you know, at a high point because you're more likely to get service in so you're not killing your battery, you know, trying to get the service. And trust me, you will be on a peak at some point during the day. I've also had a lot of people ask about solar chargers. They might work on another trail, you know, like maybe the PCT when you're in the desert or something like that. Um, but on the AT, it's pretty much pointless. I saw people try. Um, I mean, I'm not going to say that you won't get any charge out of a solar panel charger, uh, but once spring hits and the green starts coming on the trees, the leaves and everything, you're not, you're going to be in the green tunnel and you're just not going to get enough light unless you make a point to get out, you know, in a clearing and sit there and let, let it charge. So, um, I just don't think it's worth it. I would just recommend getting one of the ones that you can charge in town. All right, y'all, I hope you found that helpful. And if you have any questions relating to cell phone usage that I did not answer in this video, let me know below and I will get back to your comments. And I hope everyone has a wonderful week. We'll see you next time. Okay, so I am here at Amicalola uh, State Park and I am about to hike the approach trail. I uh, just weighed my pack in and sign the register, so I'm off.